the Aldi Solar Gluing Rock. And this is actually quite nice. It's big and chunky, fairly substantial. It feels rigid. And uh, this basically charges up during daylight and then it lights up at night. And the best way to show you this is by turning it on, which is basically involves just pressing this button for three seconds and the thing starts glowing. I'm going to turn the light off. I'm going to adjust the light settings so you can see the different modes. But this actually is a remote control. So we'll take a look at the different colours. One moment, please. So we'll start off with white, which is a fairly universal colour. It doesn't look like red, green, blue uh, mixture of white. It actually looks like an actual white LED, but I could be wrong here. Uh, red, green, blue, and then it's got the usual uh, you know, mixtures of colours. You can see a slight positive modulation ripple there. But the colours are pretty good. This is a fairly vibrant pinkish colour, pinky purple, um, which is coming across okay in the camera. And then it's got some awful effects, the usual, yeah, oh dear, that's terrible. Uh, and then the bottom button here uh, gives a sort of gentle sort of fade between colours. If you want a rock in your garden to fade between colours. It also has intensity control, so you can actually step it down intensity or up. Right, tell you what, let's take it to bits. Being Aldi, I kind of have high expectations for this. It comes incidentally with a stake that just pushes in so you can jam your rock into the ground so it doesn't blow away in the storm. So it's got six screws on the base. And I can already see... With the light shining through it, this may actually have an 18650 lithium cell. That would be quite good. But I wonder what size of solar panel it has and how the distribution of the LEDs is. We shall find out once I've got the other screw out. Oh, loud poppy clicky noises. Largely caused by me probably using not quite the right screwdriver. Well, that happens. One more screw to reveal the secrets. Yes, this is where I could have used a cordless tool. Uh-oh, particularly given that the thing wants to escape at the moment. But I didn't. I wonder if there is a waterproof seal or if it just relies on this being the bottom. Right, tell you what, is it going to come out? Is there a seal? Fairly decent solar panel. There's kind of a foam seal around the base here. So we've got the solar panel with the LEDs in the middle. We've got an RGB LED. Well, let's turn this on. Turn it on, so we've got the separate white LED. This is, of course, detecting uh, light levels. Uh, then we've got the red, green and blue. It's a standard 50-50 type of chip. Right, tell you what, let's turn it back off and uh, see if we can get that solar panel out of the way. There is the infrared sensor. This solar panel just looks as though it sits in. It doesn't look like it's stuck in. Oh, it may actually be held in by these screws. I shall zoom down onto this so you can see this. So this little circuit board here with the LEDs on it does have some screws and they look as though they are holding this solar panel in at the same time. How's that going to be? That's going to be pretty good. There's a little ribbon cable going up to the LEDs. Here's the circuit board, right? Tell you what, and the 18650 and the little infrared sensor. Right, tell you what, I'm going to get this circuit board out. This is where I'd like to take a picture of it, but I, I could, but I don't really have the my printing facilities here, but that's okay. We can still reverse engineer it. One moment, please. Okay, it has been reverse engineered. Let's explore. So you're getting the real circuit board this time instead of a picture. And what we have here is the microcontroller that controls it. It's an 8-pin microcontroller. It was a hugely complex circuit to reverse engineer for because one of the pins in this does double duty. And also there's some other odd things. The microcontroller has had a number at some point, but they've laser etched a square out the top of it to remove that number. The battery charging and control circuitry, I thought this little transistor here, it's a MOSFET, was the dusk control sensor and nothing made sense about that. In fact, it was quite an odd uh, place to have that transistor. And then there's this little thing which I thought was a standard uh, charge control chip, but it turns out it's not just a charge control chip. It may be for solar lights. It's got a dusk sensor option built into it that it can actually switch the negative rail to turn the whole circuit on. Um, other things worthy of note, four resistors with different values feeding the LEDs each resistor is tuned to the LED to get a specific intensity for colour matching. 
that's quite nice. And then there's this little infrared sensor down here with its three connections. And that was part of the complication because it's sharing a pin on the microcontroller with the switch. Right, let's take a look at the schematic. And here is the schematic, and there's a lot of interesting stuff on it. So here is the solar panel. It's a 10-section solar panel giving about 5 volts, and that 5 volts is then used to charge the lithium cell. It gives it a good sort of leeway. It gives it a good generous margin. That has a 10K resistor across it because it's also being monitored for dusk sensing, and that resistor puts a very slight load on the uh, solar panel, and it just means it comes on that little bit more sensitively. It detects uh, the dusk better. Then there's this mysterious chip, capital C, small c, small s, capital C, small b, not sure, not come across this, couldn't find something similar, but it has the solar panel going in, it has the output to the lithium cell, which it uh, controls the charge voltage, the charge current is purely limited by the ability of the solar panel to put uh, charge out. It then has the negative connection, and it also has a switched negative connection that feeds the rest of the circuitry. So this little chip is doing the dusk sensing and switching the rest of the circuitry. Then there's this mysterious MOSFET. That is to protect against the lithium cell being inserted into the holder back to front. If you do that, it doesn't turn the MOSFET on. The uh, battery has to be put in the correct way round to actually turn the MOSFET on. And that just provides protection against blowing all the circuitry up by putting it in the wrong way around. It's a very simple approach to uh, polarity protection, but it works. That took a while to reverse engineer. Uh, it's because I was thinking initially it was the dusk sensor. Then we have the power to the microcontroller comes via a 20 ohm resistor and a capacitor for decoupling to give it a steady supply, particularly if it's because it's well pulsed with modulating these LEDs for intensity. Each LED has its own resistor. The red is 47 ohms, green 33 ohms, blue 27 ohms, and white 24 ohms. That kind of fits with the fact that uh, the deeper the violet colour, in the case of the white, it's possibly a violet chip, the uh, higher the voltage. So they've just adjusted, they've tweaked those resistors to get a decent sort of intensity match. The infrared receiver requires a stable supply. So it's got a 10 ohm resistor and a 10 microfarad capacitor, but to save on quiescent current consumption when the unit is off, because you can just uh, effectively turn it off via the remote control, it uses a trick whereby the negative of the infrared sensor is actually switched to the microcontroller. So that means it only needs to turn it on when it wants to, which means if it's in standby mode, it may just pulse that infrared receiver every so often just to see if someone is actually holding a button down and that just cuts the power consumption down. The infrared receiver sends a signal to the microcontroller what the data it's receiving when it's on via a 510 ohm resistor. The reason for that resistor is because the input pin is also shared with the button which pulls down to the zero volt rail and that's to avoid short circuiting the output of the infrared receiver. That is it. It's one of these things that it took so little time to actually show you the schematic. It took a long time to reverse engineer because there were so many things. That uh, unusual chip, that uh, use of the MOSFET, and then the switched infrared negative to actually uh, cut the power consumption down of the circuit. But that is it. It's an interesting little unit. So that is the Aldi solar-powered rock. Uh, it's a nice enough unit. It seems quite well designed. And I have to say, even with just the standard 50-50 red, green, blue chip and a white emitter, it's not that bad. In a dark environment, the whole rock glows quite nicely. So that's uh, not bad. It's pretty decent. Uh, the lithium cell has a capacity, it's an 18650 of 1200 milliamp power, which is typical for this because it's not really going to take a massive charge off this solar panel during the day, but it's perfectly acceptable for that in this situation. And of course, you do have the option for upgrading it with a higher capacity one if you wish. So that is it. The Aldi Solar Rock Light. I'll just brighten this up. Is that going to? Yeah, that did work. Uh, the Aldi Solar Rock Light, it's not bad. It's actually quite a nice design.